It's Coach Schumann here. Uh, glad to have you guys on today. Uh, we do a, a special podcast, um, and I think it's really cool uh, with respect to a lot of things that are going on right now and trying to figure out, um, you know, how how to be able to uh, increase player involvement as a coach and having just watched uh, the first the first two parts of the Jordan uh, documentary, The Last Dance. I don't know if everybody got to see that, but what an amazing documentary uh, for a lot of young players that don't don't know what kind of player Jordan was, what kind of team they had. It was awesome insight and look uh, into that actual uh, into that actual time period. Having grown up in that time period, uh, it's it's incredible. Um, what you can learn from the tenacity and and the ability uh, to lead and the skill set that Jordan had and um and how unique that aspect of his playing skills were uh, second second to none. Um, I mean, I don't know that I'll ever see anything like him. I mean, Kobe was great. Um, Kobe was great. Uh, obviously LeBron is great, but, but nothing like that. Um, so I'm going to go through, you know, the, the things that are the, the 33 extras to increase player involvement. Um, I'll even answer some questions of some, some guys, uh, about that are going on. Um, and, and, uh, so as I go through the, the actual 33 things that extra things that coaches could do to increase player involvement, um, I'll really, really share uh, some really cool things and um, that'll really help you. So, number one, um, having players vote on a Hustle of the Week award uh, during practice, presenting the player with a T-shirt, some sort of award, you know, coupon, discount or something, but put players' names on the wall in the dress room to encourage your players to hustle in games of practices. So, um, the first thing, number one, is have a hustle, hustle of the week award, hustle of the week. You see this in a lot of college uniforms today, um, where, uh, they, they have sayings that will motivate the players, um, put those things on your uniform. So, uh, a good example of that is Rutgers has the family thing. And when they say family, um, and they put that in the back of their uniform, that, that makes a big difference for them. Uh, has a huge impact uh, as far as what they think about themselves and think about their their programs. So um, that's something that Greg Schiano always instilled, and you can see that in, in a lot of college programs doing that. Uh, Army does it. So so having things that that'll motivate your players f- from that standpoint. Um, number five, copy and pass out poems or articles that you've taken from magazines help to educate players. On, on what can give them a great opportunity to to be successful. That's that's a real real big thing. So um, so we'll put that on there. And while before I do that, we'll take a, we'll take a question. Um, so we're going to and then can everyone hear the audio here? All right. So first question today: Do you know what football walk-ons have to do when they get to the university? Isaac asks. Um, they're going to do the same thing that all scholarship athletes uh, will do, and um, it's the same exact thing. Um, what do they have to do as far as get to when they get to the university? You, you're going to go to camp the same time that everybody else would, so you need to just be prepared for that from, from that standpoint. Uh, number two, uh, thanks for the invite. All Star Game is it worth it. Yeah, I mean, not only have we had many great players in it, but it's a great opportunity to compete. Um, some of the best players uh, have, have been found through that, so it's definitely an opportunity there. So there's definitely something that you could do. Um, it's great competition. The whole thing should be competing as much as you can. All right, so so those are two great questions um, from, from guys that I have. So getting back to, to uh, the different motivational aspects, uh, number five, I mean, we did number five, number six, I have a theme each year, so – um, uh, working hard, um, having a theme that resonates with your players, 
Um, you know, it could, it could be anything. And and utilize that on T-shirts, utilize that on everything that you can. Uh, number seven, award points for those that don't normally appear in a box, box score. Um, so Lyman, for example, on the offensive line, um, you know, got to give an award for when they have pancakes. And, and that's something that gives them some personal recognition that makes a huge difference uh, in, in, in what they're doing. Um, so that's really, really important. Good. All right. We'll go to the, right now after we talk about that. Number nine, uh, hopefully everybody can hear us now. Cause I, I obviously did not have sound for five minutes for some reason. <laughs> so, can I commit after my senior year? Because a lot of players, uh, can you committing? Can you commit after your senior year? Yes. The, the problem with committing late in the process is that, um, if someone else takes a scholarship slot and they don't just offer the amount allotted, they'll offer scholarships to uh, quite a few players. Um, and if all of a sudden you don't take advantage of that scholarship offer and you go back and they want to commit there and you haven't been in that kind of communication, someone else takes that spot, you could lose that spot. So um, that's an important thing thing to understand uh, when you're when you're talking about uh, commitments and all the, that kind of stuff. Okay. All right. Let me get back here. Good. Great question. Uh, Cameron. Okay. So now we'll go to, uh, um, number eight. So number eight is awards in the locker room. So showcase awards that you deem valuable for your players. Showcase that, um, showcase those awards, put them up, in the locker room so everybody knows what you expect. Okay, number nine, uh, invite an ex-athlete or someone from the program or a speaker into the program um, to be able to talk about, you know, what you guys are trying to accomplish, what they've went through, someone from your own community. Um, invite different speakers to your program. Not only is that a good thing, but it gives a different perspective. Um, it gives people a different perspective on what what the program's about and what what you guys could be. You know, what are you doing there? So uh, that's that's a really good thing. Uh, number ten, uh, have the team listen to to motivational tapes. Um, and when you have them listen to motivational tapes, have them listen to specific parts. So specific things. Uh, within a motivational tape that, um, or, or a video um, that really has an impact that, in the message that you want to get. So there are movies like um, Any Given Sunday. There's an awesome motivational part there where Al Pacino, don't even know it's not real, but it's a movie where he speaks there. Um, so, so utilize those kind of things uh, to have an impact on your program. Okay, number 11, and then, after 11, I'm gonna, this will be the end of part one uh, for this here. Show motivational films or highlight tapes. So highlight tapes each week of what you've done as a program standpoint, showing that stuff, putting those highlight tapes together. Have your guys put together highlights that they think should be included and then show, uh, showing motivational films. So, you know, stuff from the Gladiator, stuff from any given Sunday, uh, Stuff from many movies like Rudy or that that really make a big difference um, in the players being able to watch something uh, and, and be able to have something that resonates with them uh, in the program. So those are of my 33 points. Um, those are 1 through 11. Hope that really uh, helps you. And like I was talking, talking about earlier where I probably got muted, uh, getting to watch the J Jordan uh, talk about what it was like during that time period, Jordan's impact in the game. Um, uh, talking about how it was to win those champ championships. Uh, it was crazy, crazy how good a player he was. It was unbelievable the dominance he had and then the work ethic that went along with it and the amount of respect that other players have for him. Uh, the amount of respect the players have um, 
you know, playing with him and the impact that he had in the game. I mean, players after him have all wanted to be like Mike. Um, Scotty Pippen, who was on his own team, realized how hard it was to carry the team once he left and he, he disappeared and, and for, for a couple of years going into playing baseball and, and retiring. Um, but but the impact that he had on Kobe Bryant, the late Kobe Bryant, on, on LeBron James, and the impact he continues to have on athletes at that bar of excellence that, that everybody wants to have. So have a great night. Uh, sorry about the audio for a couple minutes. That's that's my fault. Anybody, I, I'll answer a couple more questions here. All right, before we go today. Um, what's the first step in getting recruited? Class of 2020. So you're early in the process, freshman year. That's great. Getting right on it from a recruiting standpoint. Um, first thing you could do is you could really uh, start reaching out to coaches on Twitter and emailing them with your highlight tape. Uh, if you don't have a highlight tape yet because you're not on varsity, send them, you know, more about you, Corbin, where, um, you know, your height, weight, your name, your information, uh, your size, your GPA, all those kind of things so they can start to get familiar with you. Okay, so they get familiar with you in that process. All right, all right, thanks. And then, um, Camille, oh, Camille Jackson, okay. Um, yeah, Camille Jackson back in the day was a fantastic wide receiver with Oklahoma. Um, he was, and this is this is thinking back quite a few years. Uh, Camille had just a smooth way about him, he was a big receiver. Um, was fast, but he he had just like a a physical presence where he could go make plays and a personality to him that guys wanted to be around them. He he was he was really there in the hey, the, the beginning early heyday of our camps, um, and he was one of the very first athletes that um, became stars along with like Landon Collins and. Um, Johnny Manziel and Marcus Mariota, all guys who end up going on to the NFL with Camille end up going to Oklahoma, um, was one of those guys. He was an impact maker. He made plays. Um, he, sh he really, really did a great job in the biggest moments. So, uh, thanks for your question about Camille. Wow. That really, that really brings me back, um, <laughs> quite a bit, you know, uh, thinking back to, to the days what what that was like the, those programs back then so um like i said it was it's great being on anybody has any other questions get your questions in now before i'll let you guys go um we'll be back on again tomorrow and i'm hoping tomorrow night or during the day or tomorrow i'm going to have um uh the sideline hustle drew lieberman on we're working at those details up um and it's going to be pretty cool uh, talking wide receiver play, kind of building off that stuff. And uh, as soon as I get that, I'll get that out to everybody. Have a great night, and we'll see you soon.